you will fail your way to greatness. Most people allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. When you're willing to fail again and again and again, when you make up your mind to become unstoppable, when you make up your mind to become a no matter what person, then that will then give birth to a part of yourself that you don't know right now. Imagine, if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed, the ghost of the dreams, the ideas, the abilities, the talents given to you by life and that you, for whatever reason, you never went after that dream. You never acted on those ideas. You never used those talents. You never used those gifts. And there they are standing around your bed looking at you with large angry eyes saying, we came to you and only you could have given us life. And now we must die with you forever. See, most people stop short of their dreams and park and get off the highway of life because of the rejections of life. You will always be rejected. It's no big deal. Jack Canfield said rejection is a myth. It's not like when somebody says no and then they slap you. No, it's just, you know, to me, make no your vitamin. Get excited about the no. Why? Because every time someone says no, that brings you another step to a yes. You're getting closer. Trust me, you will win if you don't quit. You will win if you don't quit. Even a broke clock is right twice a day. As you go through the challenges of life and you look at it and embrace whatever comes to you, don't run from it, step toward it. Don't try and duck it like most people do. See, most people want it easy. See, if you easy come, easy what? Easy go. See, but when you go at what you're going to deal with and you deal with the difficulties of it. When you handle those hard things close at hand, making those hard decisions right now that you don't want to make, learning those things that you don't like to do, but you know that in order for you to get where you want to go, this is one of the hoops that you have to flip through. And I'm saying to you, whatever you got to do, do it, because if you don't, life is going to whoop you until you surrender. You have something that you brought to the universe and that if you decide that my life deserves my developing this what I do well and becoming the best at it and mastering myself and seeing what I have within me, if you decide to drop your buckets where you are and develop your gifts, I grant you, you'll never ever be without. I grant you that your gifts will take you places that will literally amaze you. I grant you that if you begin to work to develop your gifts, you'll develop a strong sense of happiness. You'll get a larger vision of yourself because part of beginning to get a larger vision of yourself, all of us need some area of our lives where we can have a feeling of competence. That people know when they think about this area, that's something you do. That you eat and sleep that. And that you do that. You do that. Changing is not easy. But changing your life, changing habits, reinventing yourself, yeah. picking yourself up after life has knocked you flat on your back. I've got to say, when life knocked you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you could get up. Well, that sounds cute, but that's not easy. When yeah. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer 17 years ago, that first time that happened, I said, hey, I can handle this. Then when it came back a year later, I mean, last year, 17 years later, and this time it metastasized to seven areas of my body and ate 40% of my T1 vertebrae. Now the stakes are higher. Is this life saying, okay, Mr. Motivator, you beat cancer the first time. What you gonna do now? <laughs> you know, I started laughing. When the doctor told me, he said, why are you laughing? Are you in denial? I says, no. I said, I feel like Mother Teresa. He said, what do you mean? She said, Lord, I know you know how much I can bear. I just wish you to have so much confidence in me. <laughs> I said, so I said, the stakes are higher. So I've got to dig in and got to fight more because at the end of the day, life is a fight for territory. And once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. 
And so it's a fight, it's a challenge in life every day. And what we have to do is embrace it. What we have to do is see it as a project to be worked on. In life, you will always be faced with a series of God-ordained opportunities, brilliantly disguised as problems and challenges. And so I see even cancer as a gift, as a God-ordained opportunity. If you die today, what dreams, what ideas, what talents, what books, what music, what leadership, what voice will die with you? There are a lot of people who are biting their fingers in fear that they might lose their jobs. But there are few people who have decided within themselves, I'm going to make it. Some people aren't waiting to be cut. Some people are moving on their own because they feel within themselves, I've got what it takes to make it. They're not afraid about tomorrow because of how they see themselves, because of what they feel that they deserve, because of what they feel that they can create for themselves. Because these people have decided as they look at the future, as they look at themselves, there's a way. Where there's a will, there's a way for me to begin to create a way out of no way. And when you have that kind of consciousness, when you have that kind of spirit, nothing can stop you. Nothing. There's no secret to success. There's a system to success. And no matter what organization you become a part of, the system works if you work it. If you don't work it, it won't work. But it works if you work it. And that's one four-letter word that most people don't like. They're not willing to work. There are winners, and there are losers, and there are people who have not discovered how to win. And all they need is some coaching. All they need is some help and assistance, just a little support. All they need is some insight or a different strategy, a plan of action to make some adjustments that will open up the key to a whole new future for them, that will give them access to the unlimited power that they have within themselves. That's all that they need. So what I want you to do is, is think about something you want for you, that's real for you that's important for you, that will give your life some special meaning and power. And I don't even want you to say, I can do that. I don't want you to assume that. See, five years ago, when I started out in this area, I would not have been able to make the mental leap that I would be up to where I am right now. I don't want you to begin to just psych yourself out. No, no. I want you to be able to say something to yourself that will enable you to maintain a level of integrity with yourself. That when you say this, even when you face tremendous setbacks, it, it will be a benchmark to keep you in the game, to keep you moving forward and experimenting and readjusting your strategy and your plan of action, continuously looking for ways to win. I think we have to reflect on who am I? Why am I here? What drives me? If I died today, what three words would I want said about me if I died today? You know, what is it that defines me? You know, and how, I, how do I define myself? So I went to the next mode necessary to start talking to people and seeking and asking for what I wanted and leveraging relationships and trying to find out how do the people do it that went ahead of me? How do they do it? And then what is it I need to do? How is it I need to train myself to develop myself? What's the resources that will be required in order to make it happen? And as I start seeking out and asking questions, I started running into people said, I know someone who can help you do that. And they helped me get connected with those people. Remember, we have so much energy that can take us so far. It's necessary that you hook up with some other energy that can take you to the next level. I hooked up with them, they said, let's, let's go. I said, away we go. <laughs>
Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, what's using my life? I heard a guy give a lecture one time that says, we are today what we were when. And he was talking about the fact that we, to a great extent, behave, think, react because of some previous experience that we've had. One of the things that we know about life is that it is always changing. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes things go real well, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes you're happy, and sometimes you're sad. Now that's that thing called life. And when we begin to understand and know that, accepting that reality that, that we will never ever have things just on an even kill all the time, that you're gonna have some ups and you're gonna have some downs. But during those down moments, that's where the growth takes place. That's where the work is. See, anybody can feel good when they have their health, their bills are paid, they have happy relationships, business is successful. Anybody could be positive then. Anybody can have a larger vision then. Anybody can have faith under those kinds of circumstances. Am I correct? See, but the real challenge, the real challenge of growth mentally, emotionally, and spiritually comes when you get knocked down. Somebody said that, that adversity introduces a man to himself or a woman. How you handle it, that's where the growth takes place. When I was facing some challenges, I had a guy say something to me and I suggest this is one of the first things that you want to do when you're facing a challenge, you want to get unstuck. Evaluate where you are. Look at it, assess yourself. Assess yourself and assess the situation. What brought you there? What role did you play? Earl Nightingale had a saying I like. He said, all of us are self-made, but only the successful will admit it. What has brought you to this point? What did you learn from it? Are you learning anything? Or are you doing it over and over and over again? Somebody said that insanity is doing the same thing in the same way, expecting a different outcome. Are you going through it or are you growing through it? Are you bigger and better because of it? Because it's not going to leave you until you grow through it. I was going through a major challenge in my life that was wearing me out, that was using me. Well, you see, your mind is, is, you know, when you go into a service station to get gas, you don't go in there and just start pumping. When you push the lever up, it clears the previous bill. By the same token, if you want to begin to move, you've got to clear your mind of all the unnecessary luggage and baggage that's weighing us down. I couldn't move, I couldn't think about what am I going to do to get out of this situation because I was so concerned about what happened and what he did to me and how bad it was. I was so stuck in that, I couldn't even focus on what I should have done. Feeling sorry for myself and angry and none of that was taking me anywhere. So pretty soon I, I learned through effort, made a conscious, deliberate, determined effort. I had to let it go, I had to forgive it. Let it go and begin to focus on developing myself. And I say to you, you're going to have people to do things to you. Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go and move so you can grow, so you can get on with your life. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is what are you going to do about it? All of us have experienced some tragedy and if we haven't, we will. And you can either let it destroy your life or you can build upon it. You can permit it to let you let it hold you down or you can decide I'm not going to let that happen to me. I'm bigger than this. Make a declaration to yourself. Declare all out war that you're going to get out of this rut. I don't care how good you are, I don't care how talented you are. I don't care how much you work on yourself. There are some times when things aren't going to go right. They just are not going to go right. There are times when anything that can happen will happen. Murphy's law will be knocking at your door. Why? I don't know why. That's called life. And you have to deal with it. Sometimes your life will be in a slump, just like sports. Some of the best shooters can't hit baskets different times in games. They get in a slump. Do they sit on the sideline and say, you know, I just didn't hit a basket today? No, they continue to execute. I suggest to you that if you are facing a challenge, don't stop. Stay busy. Work your plan. Continue to do those things that you know that work for you after you have evaluated yourself in the situation. Continue to move. Stay busy, stay busy, stay busy. Find somebody that you can help so you can forget about you for a moment. See, sometimes the best thing to do is to be. 
Sometimes you have to just back up and go within yourself. A bow and arrow, you, you can't take a bow and just push it out an arrow. You just can't push the arrow out. You have to pull it back and then release it. Sometimes you have to back up and go within and pray and meditate and recharge your batteries. Go away, clear your head, and then come back and look at it from a different vantage point. Don't operate while you are under the spell or the effect of what's going on. Next thing is that you've got to activate the thinker in you. Don't allow your emotions to control you. We are emotional, but you want to begin to discipline your emotion. If you don't discipline and contain your emotions, they will use you. Your mind goes on automatic, just like a guard. You know, I loved reading the book called As a Man Think It by James Allen. He uses the analogy of the mind being like a garden. You know, weeds don't have to have any encouragement to grow. You don't have to water them. They don't have to get sunshine. They don't have to have fertile ground. They will grow through the cracks of a sidewalk. Am I right? But if you want to grow orchids or roses or any kind of exotic flowers, there are special processes and procedures you must go through. Well, by the same token, you don't have to force yourself or motivate yourself to think negatively, to be depressed, to hate somebody, to want revenge, to want to get back at somebody, to beat yourself up over the head, to feel loaded with guilt. You don't have to make any effort to do that. Your mind is on automatic. It will do that by itself. They're just temporary inconveniences. They're not stronger than I am. I'm in charge here.